Bits and bytes, zeros and ones. The subatomic particles of the information world. In the blink of a decade, the internet has woven a virtual web around the globe, linking everyone in an ever-changing here and now. But as this complex web expands and envelops us, our dependency upon it grows too, changing us and our world in unexpected ways. building there's probably a computer if not two behind every window we've got this efficiency we've got this ability to run bigger systems but with it there's a higher risk that one little thing will cause a uh, catastrophic failure government has the money the intelligence the means to intercept every single phone call in the world and every single email it's a pitched battle over the future of the internet. Since before the dawn of history, humans have communicated using the technology of their time. Today, our tools and toys still connect us. More than three billion mobile phones are now in use, with half the world communicating on the go. The infrastructure that supports that is immense and sometimes vulnerable. February 2004. At a press conference in Athens, the details of an astonishing security breach are revealed. During a routine inspection, staff at Vodafone, the largest telecommunications company in Greece, had uncovered something suspicious. Rogue software operating secretly in the computers, running its entire mobile phone network. Within days, the cover has blown off one of the most extraordinary cyber crimes ever. And the phone company's own head of network security is found dead. In the lead up to the 2004 Olympics, security in Athens was tight. Yet somehow, skilled hackers secretly infiltrated Vodafone's switching network and tapped the mobile phones of 100 of the most powerful people in Greece. The people that were bugged were across the political spectrum. It was the prime minister, his wife, uh, various ministers, members of the chief of staff of the army and the navy. Um, members of political organizations, and so on. For five months, private conversations were monitored, confidential business dealings spied on, military intelligence overheard, and state secrets compromised. The calls were intercepted by anonymous pay-as-you-go mobile phones. Investigators uncover a sophisticated and daring plan that exploited vulnerabilities built right into the heart of most telecommunications networks. Most countries require that telephone companies build a feature called lawful interception capability into their systems so that police and intelligence agencies can monitor conversations through a central switching center. For many years, scientists have advocated not putting such a system into to the exchanges because they said it could be abused. The telecom operator said this is only a theoretical possibility, but now we have seen that this has been abused. The hackers wrote some 6,000 lines of computer code to subvert the system's built-in capacity for wiretapping. Installed in Vodafone's main network switches, the rogue code also disabled a system intended to log every wiretap. So instead of sending police a parallel stream of digitized signals, data from the tap numbers was secretly diverted to the hackers' phones. 
There were 14 to 16 mobile phones operating as shadow devices of the tapped numbers. When a call was received by the intercepted phone, it was immediately connected with one of the bug phones through the lawful interception software. Apparently, this shadow phone was taping the conversation into another software. The infiltration was only discovered after the hackers attempted to upgrade their illegal software. Their patch inadvertently interrupted text messages from being delivered, triggering error codes. When engineers investigated, Vodafone discovered the illicit software sending out the duplicate streams of data. The jig was up. That's also when Costas Salakidis, Vodafone's head of network security, was found hanged in his apartment. Whether he was a guilty accomplice who committed suicide or an unfortunate whistleblower who was murdered may never be known. The bugging equipment was extremely sophisticated. It was transmitted in real time from um, those phones to uh, spots near the U.S. Embassy in in Athens and then sent to other places around the world, most notably near Laurel, Maryland, where the Special Collection Service is, which is the United States' prime wing for uh, intercepting communications. The scandal exposed weaknesses in the security of mobile phone systems. Currently, when the conversation leaves, my phone gets encrypted over the air, decrypted, as it passes through landlines and fiber optic cables and decrypted again from the next tower to my cell phone. Instead of doing that, we could encrypt the conversation as it leaves my phone and decrypt it only when it reaches the other end of the conversation. But if phone companies must keep their networks accessible to law enforcement agencies, end-to-end -end encryption isn't an option. The Vodafone saga raises unsettling questions about the security of our phone systems and our privacy. Lawful interception means whatever the interceptors want it to mean. These are all kind of phony rules. In, in practice, what should be understood is there's zero privacy. Uh, the United States government has the money, the intelligence, the means to intercept every single phone call in the world and every single email. The more ways we find to connect instantly using complex systems, the more ways those systems can be subverted. Yet sometimes, unconventional ways of tapping into the system can yield unexpected, even life-saving benefits. Hello? Sally? Sally, this is Mother. Simple, wasn't it? She just picked up her telephone and dialed her daughter in San Francisco, California. In a matter of seconds, she is talking with her. Simple, and yet you are seeing the results of many, many years of coordinated effort in research, engineering, and operating experience. Not so long ago, telecommunications were straightforward. You dialed a number, and your voice traveled along cables to someone else's phone. Not anymore. Cell phones used to be something that you used to have a conversation with one other person, and now they've evolved into communications devices, entertainment devices, social networking devices. I can surf the internet, I can watch TV, I can listen to music, I can take a picture and send it to people. It's really the one thing that you need to be completely connected and entertained. Cell phones now have uses no one, not even the phone companies, expected. Side benefits that aren't just convenient, but can even be a matter of life and death. In September 2007, Tanya Ryder disappeared while driving home from work along Washington State Route 169. Her husband Tom and a rescue team searched the roadside for days, but found no sign of her SUV. If you'd walked it looking